Good morning, Ralph. Hey, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Is there any echo in my voice? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, no echo yet. Yep. Okay, cool. I'm just uh, figuring out if I've configured the audio correctly. Yeah. All right. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Adrian. Uh, who else is there? Hey, you three. And no, no. I think that's it. Let's see. All right. Let me see where Sasha is. I'm going to ping him. So Sasha will be here instead of Murnell, or? I think Murnell was hoping to join today. OK, cool. Um, and uh, let me pull up to the agenda to, uh, in the meantime. Hey, Alex. Hello, gentlemen. Sorry for being late. A bit of Zoom connectivity issues. It's all good. We're just getting getting started here. Trying to uh, get the rest of the people to join. Um, I think we can still wait one more minute before we start. Um, in the meantime, I can share my screen uh, with the agenda, and we can probably uh, note down the participants. Uh, well, first of all, um, is there any agenda item that anyone wants to add before we start? All right, I'm gonna take uh, this this silence for for a big note. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah, I, well, assume, well. I assume they're in the uses of devices by non root containers. We'll be discussing the current state of where we're at and where you, where you guys think we should be going instead. Right. Um, I think so. Yeah. I mean, that's that's probably the. I mean, that's that's the almost first non administrative -like item. Yeah. Um. So. Hi everyone, welcome to the con second uh, working group. I think we are being recorded. Let me check. Uh, actually, I still need to request permission from the host to record. And apparently I am not the host, so I'll have to figure that one out again. Uh, what is it with button claim host in the participant list? Uh, let's see. I need a host key to do that. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll try to figure that one out. Um, oh, Murdan is asking for the meeting link. Here we go. Uh, I'll try to figure out recording uh, for the next meeting. Sorry, this is not going as expected. And uh, here we go. This is know. Uh, this uh, Zoom link, is it going to be a continuous one or? Is it just for this one instance? Um, it should be the same Zoom meeting. Okay, when probably let's add it to the to the uh, doc. Recording. So we the Zoom meeting is um, is permanent, or at least uh, is set up until December. Uh, and then uh, we'll figure out, um, need to figure out. Um, talking with Ricardo, um, it would be nice to have the chart of the group just finished by Friday. So having um, just people go over it and post a comment or a sign off uh, would be really nice. Um, if 
I think the bigger question here is really, is there a section that's needed? Uh, and like um, Adrian mentioned it uh, in the previous meeting, which is like, should we have a full um, section on, um, uh, on, uh, on use cases? Um, I can't find it, but um, I think I, that, that was one of the questions that we needed to figure out. Okay. It's, it's there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there is a section on the um, in the slides, but we probably need to have a um, separate uh, use case section. Too much hard job. And um, the other one that we need to figure out as a group is just. Um, the KubeCon USA panel, who wants to submit, and um, the deadline being by Sunday. Um, I think a panel is four speakers. Um, so I'm um, having some idea of who wants to submit uh, and um, w w what do we submit for the KubeCon USA panel um, is, is, is pretty helpful. I reviewed your text and I liked option number two. Uh, so the changes which I was thinking to do is like very minimal and you already incorporated that. Yes, um, yeah, I, I had written two options. One which was more focused on CDI and the second one which is more focused on the cloud group. Um, I prefer the second one to be honest. I, I really like what you're saying. Um, I'm also like if if people are interested in submitting uh, or in, in, in another like abstract, I'm happy to like I think we should we should definitely consider other alternatives. Um, but yeah, is there? I think most of the conversation needs to happen on the Google Doc, so um, feel free to take a look at the texts comments um, and um, yeah if you're interested in contributing being an author uh, presenting just uh, l let us know so uh, Reno, for, for submission uh, what else information do we need like uh, names uh, but besides the names do, do we need a bio or anything else I think mostly names uh, and then I'll, I'll try to figure out the I'll probably try to synchronize everyone over, like, um, in terms of um, the submission process on Thursday or Friday. I plan to be there, so I'm, I will be willing to help you guys out. Okay. So, and I agree, the second one, we're, we're, the focus is to try to get help from that group, right? So. Yeah. Um. All right, um, Sasha, do you want to take over for to talk about non-root containers? Uh, before we go, uh, uh, regarding this charter document, I, I had one comment. So, re re regarding the use cases, so we know some of the use cases right now, but I, I think as we, as we start to work on actual specification and so on, I think we will uh, encounter some our additional use cases. So, like. Well, figuring out all possible use cases, it should be also part of a charter of this working group. I think that's definitely fair, fair enough. Um, so, I mean, like if this document I mean, is, only, is, is only to fund uh, like a, a working group creation, when it, it should just state the goal and not specific like item one, two, three, which we are going to uh, to do. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely a, 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 a reasonable um, position to be in. So maybe maybe use cases need to be specific to um, the, the effort that we're solving. So for example, use cases for CDI need to be specific to CDI. And they, 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 there can be examples of um, specific use cases that we're, we're hoping to solve immediately, but really is, I, I agree with what you're saying in that uh, 
we need to be careful to not prescribe to a very specific area. Eric, your audio is broken. I, th I, th I think Merrick is trying to speak, but the audio is super garbage. No, it's still, it's still very. It's, it, it sounds like the audio codec. Totally yeah. You should probably try to join by phone. Okay. Oh, right. try, try to re log in. <laughs> Um, I think we're getting some chats. But your keyboard sounds fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, right. So, uh, for our topic about non root uh, containers, uh, I actually invited my colleague, Mick, uh, who is uh, specifically looking at this topic. Well, we actually both looked at this topic, but he wanted to speak about it. So, oh, well, although, although I don't know what, what, to, what to talk about it. So, I, uh, we created this proposal with uh, options A and B, and then I think Mike. Uh, added uh, one, one more option or option C. So I think what we can, uh, well, I think we can uh, spend a few few minutes to, to brain, brainstorm the al alternatives. And, sure. Yeah, uh, let's, let's bring up that, that guide and, and start with the container runtimes, I think. Um, is it, it's, it's not clear to me that we've got a complete understanding of how the container runtimes are currently setting. The, mm. the UID, GIDs of the devices. I mean, we're, we're doing LSAT on the host path. And it almost reads like you don't think we are. So I'm not sure if, it, if we're insane. So according, according to what we currently see in the code of ContainerD and Cryo, uh, it's just simply copying exactly what is present on the host. So if your hosts are different distros, when it means like, like group video, group or accelerators or something, will have different numeric IDs. If if by getting the information from the host path of the device is passed, if that's what you mean, yes. But the Sa Sasha's comment was that uh, even the numerical uh, group IDs they they might be different. Right. So if you want them to be set, we need a way to set them, right? If you don't want to use the, the host path IDs, then we're going to need a, some kind of way to set them for each host device separately, I think. I don't think we can just copy the, you know, the, the user ID of the process for the container to the yeah. user ID of the, the host device, right? Or the device that you want to mount in the container. Uh, why not? Well, so it, it, it's not about mounting, it's about creating a new device node inside the container namespace. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. And, and why, why assume or why do we presume that all host devices should have the same user ID as the process of the, of the container? I mean, that's certainly a pattern that we could support. Um, I'm just saying that's not the way the specification is drawn out in, in, in the, it, not in the runtime spec or in the, um, in the cry spec coming from K Kubernetes. Well, uh, CRI spec doesn't have it at all. It, it doesn't have uh, at all information about permissions. It's missing. That's right. It's missing the host device permissions. Yeah. Uh, so regarding the runtime, and, and the reason, and the reason, by the way, that it's missing is because the initial design was to pull that from the host path that they pass us. So if they wanted to create a device with a different set of permissions, they would create that device and then pass it to us from from Kubelet. That's that's the current design pattern that we're using. But they may not be doing that, right? They may not be doing anything extra yet. But that's why we did what we did. Okay. Just providing uh, a little history. 
I, I would say it, it's it's a bit different story. So most probably it was uh, just overlooking the initial design. So at that time, like most of the people were not uh, running containers as known root. Like the majority of workloads were running as root inside container. So I think when, when there's two different cases here, right? Like one is the regular devices created by the container, like your PTMX and all those things. Right. So those I'm those I think we should just retain what uh, the host permissions are, uh, because some of these have special groups and users. But I, as, if I understand the proposal correctly, we are only t talking about changing the UID and GID of uh, the devices injected. So it'll change it for your GPU device, for example, right? And not for everything because the defaults will still be, default devices will still be created by the container runtime as part of the templates. Yeah, yeah. It, it's only for devices which are injected by device plugins. Okay, yeah. So, so right now device plugins just only communicates the desire saying like, this is the host uh, device uh, pass and this is what user will do with it, like read, write, and mcannot uh, operation. Right. Uh, so what it translates to is just copies the permissions from the host and when uh, does the C groups modification to enable access to these devices for those operations. But the but problem then... is what, uh, what the container can come uh, to, to a runtime saying like run it as user like 25 and group uh, 33. Uh, and we end up in the situation what uh, these numbers of user ID and group ID is random. Like user yeah. cannot predict what kind of uh, ownership is uh, on the host. Right. And uh, our first thought was like, okay, if user is requesting this user ID and group ID when and user should give access to, uh, to, to that device. So le let's use this group ID and user ID as, per as ownership information for this particular device. Yep. Uh, yep. Which, yep. Which, is, which, which is basically the o o option, option A that we are proposing. And it's like a right. kind of nat natural choice in, in, a, in a sense that uh, the, the application owner deploys that give my process user ID and group ID these numbers and I also want to use the devices. So make the user ID and group ID the same. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. My, my only worry is do we have any edge cases where we wouldn't want to do that? Like this definitely makes sense for your GPU and those kind of devices. But will it break any legacy workloads, say, where you have a bunch of different processes running as different uh, UIDs, and then we just change it to the UID and GID of the primary process? Is it going to break such workloads? So what I'm really getting at is, should this be specified at the CRI level at a per device level? or we can assume and just say that whatever devices were sent to us over the devices, over the CRI are fair to, uh, okay to show on. Yeah, that was my worry too, Murnal, that yeah. mm -hmm. we're not gonna cover those edge cases. And right. it, it so, seemed like it, it wouldn't be that hard for us to either have a switch for the mode for all the devices, or we could we could just have a new you know, security context for each device set by Kublet. Yeah. Um, so well, well, there are a few things here. So trying to answer the questions like one by one. So the first question, do we have scenario where we don't have matching the process ID and uh, permissions? Uh, I tried to think about it and I haven't found any reason for it. So practically like if user wants to use the device, he needs some way to use it. The only option or oh, only potential scenario is what like if you have some devices which is like read only. So if if a permission is set by only reading from device but not calling any any like IOCTL and so on, uh, that might be limiting factor. But on that hand, uh, we are getting information from CRI which says like what mode of operation for devices we have. So like read, write, uh, create. 
so we can uh, do CH mod uh, accordingly to, to, to that information. Um, regarding multiple user IDs, what uh, Manal, you, you, you brought up, um, my understanding, so if you have, uh, so we, we actually, we have two scenarios. Uh, one scenario is what we have right now, is what uh, device, each individual device is assigned to one container. Uh, like we don't have right now the shared devices between multiple containers. And if a container is started with specific user ID, which is non-root, uh, there is uh, practically quite small chance what we will have inside what container processes which will be running with different user ID, right? Yeah, but I, just last week I was talking to some customer and they were trying to move legacy workload and they are running a bunch of different processes. So in such cases, if we just change it to the primary container user and other uh, other processes running as different users within the container try to access the devices, they'll just right. say, no. Yeah, Murnell, that's the type of scenario I'm thinking about but, where you're running multiple hosts within one container, um, right? Services, microservices, that right. sort of thing. And you may not want to provide a any any old microservice that's running, you know, access to devices. Um, or at least not, you know, through some interaction between the processes that are running in the container. Right. But when, uh, but when it's a question, should we, uh, well, should we go like with 666 for, for the device node? So like any process inside the container which requested the device will be able to use it or so I'm, I'm looking at uh, some devices that are owned by root.tty and they have like 660. So I think uh, we'll- I mean, no, we'll it's a here. different kind of devices. So like those system wise, like TTIs and so on, it's not what will be in scope of this particular change. We are talking about like only like GPU. So any kind of accelerators which comes from uh, device plugins. So, but how will the container runtime know that yeah. container runtime will only get it through the CRI, right? Yes. And, and so uh, it can, can it assume that anything sent to it over a CRI is always a GPU device kind of a device? Like no one is preventing someone to take a TTY like device and do a mount to the kubelet and it will, it will also still show up through the CRI. That's, uh, that's the problem. In, in theory, yes. Uh, but uh, isn't it so what TTIs will be also uh, in the scope of uh, container namespace? So like with system devices like uh, Dev0 and so on, I think we are scoped. Yeah, I think maybe we may be fine, but I'm still, I still worry about edge cases. So I feel like maybe scoping it down just to the device, maybe, maybe better if possible. Uh, just so, at, the, at the device level, you say, I just want to change the permissions of this one or have some security context field. Yeah, so, so the way that I see it is definitely option A has a big or at least the big concern here is, would we be breaking existing users or existing workloads? Existing limits on those devices, yes. Yeah. Um, it, it, I mean, there, there's ways we can mitigate this. Um, I don't know how that would, would translate um, to ContainerD or Podman, but in, in Kubernetes, we could go through the feature gate path um, I don't know if that translates very well for Podman or ContainerD, but um, we would enable this feature by default and better wait for a year or two and then figure out if we've had feedback on this from customers that are um, concerned that we broke their workloads. Um, that, that might be one way we could go forward. Um, the, the other alternative definitely passing a device security context makes some sense because we're definitely certain here that we wouldn't be breaking users. Um, right. 
Well, the well, problem is, uh, uh, Renaud, well, well, two things. Like one thing is, uh, if we are talking about outcome of uh, this group, where we will have this uh, CDI interface of injecting the devices. So once we get that, the problem will go away because we will have uh, ability to specify like the uh, runtime uh, spec part, which can include also ownership. Yep. Right. Uh, so that's like long-term solution. Uh, Mid-term solution or short-term solution, we, we have two options. Like one is uh, like option A. So we, we just clarify the assumption of what, uh, like what will be permissions of the devices uh, like from CRI to OCI level. Uh, and option two is uh, we start uh, changing the interf interfaces between the device plugin to Kublet and from Kublet to runtime to include also. Yeah, that's long term. Uh, <laughs> well, it, that's practically <laughs> the two options what we have. Like with device security context, it means like changes in both two interfaces between right. device plugin and between CRI to runtime. So how about one more option, like uh, the way we got in support for Kata and stuff, right? If ContainerD and Cryo agree on an annotation, we can use an annotation in the runtimes to gauge uh, how it's going to work out, right? Yeah, you just have to have a map, I think, for the, right. uh, yeah. for the device path to the UID, GID that you want to set. Oh, just, just, it, it, could, it could just be a flag that, hey, shown my devices uh, yeah. to, to the, yeah. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that would work too. Yeah, yeah you could do a, a, B, or C in that in that prototype just based on some annotations and then set yeah. up. And, and the device plugin can pass down annotations uh, since I want to say one fourteen. Yeah. So. Also, I don't but, think it would be hard for us to add security context. To tell you the truth, but but yeah, annotation works too. Mike, the problem with uh, security context is what. Uh, like the device plugin, which knows something about the device, it doesn't know anything about the pod or container which requesting that device. So like we don't know the process or group ID of a container which will be using that device. But you can still have a Boolean saying, shown it, right? Because you don't want to change it to something else. You just want to change it to the container user, right? Uh, Boolean, yes. Boolean, we, we can we can use, yes. Yeah, I, I can't think of a case where it wouldn't be something else. Like you have one user, but you're changing it to something else. For your use case, can you think of such a scenario? Unless well, it's a group, uh, it's a group uh, thing. Uh, if, it's, if there's a group yeah. sharing or something, then it could, <laughs> it, it could be a case where your group ID is similar across different pods, but your UID is, I'm not sure. Yeah, but, yeah, but expect... even, even the group ID is like, you, you cannot control what the uh, end user will put in his YAML. Like which group ID he, he wants to use. So, yeah. so Rana, you can say container D cryo. So Podman is a different thing. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. So like Boolean annotation, which will control what, uh, what functionality like to uh, CHO on the devices to uh, like run as user Razon group, uh, yeah. it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, I don't know the scenarios where it's not needed. So maybe we start with the annotation, we let people try it out and then give us Feedback. I, I think a SARS away, this is not needed. I think this is just like an opt in type of uh, flag that uh, we, we, we can set ourselves that we explicitly want run as user and run as group variables. Right, instead of using the host pass else. Mm. Right. Mm. It would have to be yeah. drawn in some comment somewhere that, you know. Yes, well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I know the use cases where this is needed. I, I don't know uh, use cases where the host user ID and group ID is valuable inside container namespace. Hmm. I, I think only scenarios will be for legacy workloads where they haven't broken into microservices architecture and they have multiple processes still running. Where if you try to change something into just one user, then you might break 
other processes running as a different user. Yep, like WebSphere. <laughs> but but when it means what with this kind of legacy workloads should have uh, uh, like real good assumption what were OS inside container and OS on the host is exactly the same. Right. I, I, maybe we are talking about Linux here, right? Mainly, not not a VM like scenario. Yes, I am talking also about Linux, but like uh, for example, like group video on Ubuntu is different from the group video on OpenSUSE. Okay. That's that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So if, if you have a container workload, which is exactly the same as your host OS, when you can rely on the mapping from the like user visible uh, string to uh, numeric ID number. Okay. But anyway, uh, I mean, like we, we, can, we can start with annotation and if we see what, uh, like there is no breakages when we can in right. longer yeah. term. Yeah. Uh, Try try to do it. So, like device plugin has this ability to uh, set the container level annotation. Uh, CRI level will get it. Yeah, so I think it's workable. Just a bit, it will be a bit more code in the runtime patches. Which is okay. I, mean, I guess I mean as long as like uh, container D and cryo can agree on the. I mean. We can all agree on what the annotation should be called. Should be fine. All right. Um, I think next steps for this are making pull request against cryo and container D, right? Yeah. Uh, regarding this annotation, uh, we actually added this topic to also today's SIG note. So, do we want to talk with SIG note folks about standardizing the name of this annotation, or like how how do you see where? I don't think we should use them to standardize the annotation because those would be more on the OCI side. But but I think we do need to talk to them about whether or not they would want to cap so they could own extending their current device API, right? And, and then enhancing the CRI API to pass you know, the correct security contact. I guess we can just inform them that we, uh, why we are doing this and then we can just follow up later on, like how, how it works out. Uh, right now, I, I we probably, I, I'm not sure, Sasha, do you guys want to block on a cap for this annotation? Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. block on a cap. Yeah, there. yeah, I mean, we can start the cap discussing, yeah, this is step one with annotation, then depending on where it goes, we may have. Right. We'll, we'll to, to do it by default, or, yeah. Yeah, we're we'll just doing the annotation to explore the space. Right. Oh, well, practically, like uh, annotation mechanism doesn't require changes anything in the kubelet, so it's just yeah. like information only to to the Kubernetes guys. But if you want to change any of the interfaces, when we definitely need the cap. Right. Yeah. I I think what we can do today is that we we just report out the the short short term decision how how we want to go with with this one and then. Right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe having a small issue at first. Well, you already had the issue, but uh, writing on the issue, um, just our our short term plan to figure out if this if it enables us correctly would would, would be like probably an into or a middle ground, right, between making a cap and and not saying anything. So yeah, we can update that issue to capture the decision for now mm -hmm. and inform it in today's signal and then just take it from there. All right. Do you have anything else on the topic, Sasha? No, not today. So I, I, I'm fine with current state. All right. And um, I, I, can, I, I can look into maybe adding a, a pull request to like a, a early POC implementation for Okay, cool. All right. And the next agenda item is um, like, there's no specific action. I wanted to mention the fact that um, um, some the device monitoring in Kubernetes are currently um, 
working towards GA. Um, we're looking into disabling some device metrics that were collected by Kubelets. Um, and um, I mean, before we go to GA, the general question is um, to this group, if, if there's been any concern around device monitoring, if there's been any issues, um, and um, just getting some feedback on, on the existing mechanism, if, if there are other people that are using the pod resources API um, would be nice. I know that uh, Malta CNI is using the pod resource API. I know that we have the eGPU exporter, but having some more feedback from different people would be would be nice on this. Okay, I don't know, but, uh, how have you used this metrics API or not? Oh. So it's not really a metrics API so much as is, um, as it is um, an API that you can use to figure out what device uh, belongs to what container and pod. So for example, uh, the problem that we have at NVIDIA is when we are collecting metrics about a GPU and we export them on, on I mean, as a Prometheus exporter, um, we have the metrics as, um, I don't know, GPU utilization, right? And then we have GPU equals UID uh, as a tag, and then um, it, maybe it's a counter, and then we have a spit like a number, 100, right? Um, but right now the problem is with this specific metric, um, you don't know, um, at the end of the day, you wanna be able to do a graph that says for pod and container X, the GPU utilization is 100. But right now you only have a node view of, um, of the utilization. So what the pod resource API allows you to do is it allows you to have um, a attribute that allows you to um, export um, or have information on what is the container and what is the pod, right? So, Basically, in your exporter, you can now query Kubelet to figure out, hey, I have this GPU or I have this device. Can you tell me which pod and which container it belongs to? So that I can now tag my resources with that information. Yeah, well, my colleague, Ukri, he, he was, I think, using that interface, right, okay. Well, we don't have that level of details, unfortunately, which is being described right by Renault, but we would like to have it. So um, as to kubelet metrics, no, I haven't really been using those. I've been using the device information from the gRPC, uh, which basically tells you what devices are used in containers, I tried that. Yes, before. so we're, we're talking about the same API, I think it's the uh, yeah. pod resources API. Yeah, I've been, I've, I've experimented it with it, let's say. It seems to work, it's usable. What are your plans regarding it? I just make it GA. Just, I mean, we, we don't have any plans to extend it. We just wanna make sure that um, pretty much uh, it's GA now and not just better indefinitely. Okay. All right. Um, so I think I'm pretty much done. Feel free to um, read over the cap if you're interested in that topic. Um, put a plus one if, if you think that it's okay. Um, if not, feel free to comment. Um, CDI is the last topic. Um, I've created the GitHub organization and invited um, most people in the group, uh, if not everyone. Um, let me know if you're not in there. Um, I think the just general question is, where are the next steps and what are some of the um, some of the questions that uh, we aren't uh, comfortable with. Uh, 
So my understanding about the next steps, uh, I see uh, two things which needs to be done. First, regarding the spec itself. So, Renaud, you had very good content uh, as a starter uh, in, in your private repository. So I, I, th I think we should uh, reuse it as much as we can. So like, if you can create with PR, so we can start um, uh, like commenting and maybe changing a bit of a thing. So, oh, I don't know, like if, if you can split it uh, a bit, like uh, the text part and when the spec part itself, so we can do like multiple PRs. Uh, uh, well, that's one thing. Uh, reason why I'm thinking about this in PR mode is because um, for the spec, I, I, I was thinking like, uh, when we first time discussed it, I, I was saying what like in this container spec, we, we should be able to put like majority of information what we can uh, put in from, from uh, OCI runtime spec. And uh, I think uh, while my comment is still true, uh, I think we should have a list of items which is actually allowed to be said explicitly. So we know what we have this permission mechanism for device where like with fields, we know what environment variables uh, can be injected, paired to, to the device, uh, maybe a few other fields. But uh, we shouldn't be saying like it's wild, wild west, so we can, you can inject everything from OCI where. So just, just to explicitly clarify which uh, bits of OCI specs uh, can be specified where. Um, that's one part for regarding the CDI. Uh, second thing what I had in mind was uh, probably forking the run C um, uh, from, well, no, sorry, not, uh, not run C. Yeah, uh, sorry, discard, discard my second thought. Okay. Alexander, it, it, you say it, it, inject, when you say inject, what exactly do you mean there? So the way they the way they understand what Sasha is saying is um, the CDI spec um, should not basically when when it describes devices it describes the operations that need to be to happen um, for that device to be available to the container right and these operations could be mounts these operations could be hooks so if we look at I see. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, CDI. Here, we, we've we've described a few examples here where it could be a host path here, right? Um, so I mean, I think. I but, think you, but you also have uh, hooks injection. Yeah. We we've described devices, mounts, hooks. I think Sasha's comment is that um, the list of operations should be exhaustive. It should not be. Uh, Anything that is in the OCI spec, it should be a list of things that we are okay with. Right. Yeah, so like device uh, subsection, the mount subsections, the hooks subsection, environment subsection, maybe something else. We just need to be carefully saying like, this is the item from runtime spec, what you can put here. So, so when you say inject, you mean at the device layer, right? Yeah, inject is probably not the right term because um, at the end of the day, CI is just a transformation operation on the OCI spec, right? Um, yeah, I think is, whatever, yeah. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, I think like whatever we put in the spec is only what will be comfortable supporting, right? It's not an open thing like the So uh, the, the, the CDI should define what, uh, fields are supported and only those fields like the, the runtime should not blindly just process all the items there and match them with uh, other existing OCI fields and add them. And I guess uh, we may also need some ordering thing here, right? Like append inject in the beginning or something like that for at least mounts. Can, can you repeat that? For, sorry for the ordering. So for the mounts, we may need some ordering, right? Because mounts, the ordering, the order in which they are applied yeah. uh, is significant. Whereas for devices, it doesn't matter. Ordering needs to be specified. 
Yeah. I mean, it, it may be possible that after all of our examples, we think, oh, in all cases, we just do an append, so we don't need an order ordering. But till we know that for sure, how we inject them, uh, we, we will need some guidance on the run runtime side, right? Whether we append or add to the beginning or inject somewhere else, yeah. or sort or something like that. Yeah, my, my point was more about what like uh, for for these fields descriptions, let's not reinvent the wheel and just use the uh, whatever needed pieces from the runtime spec. Right. Yeah. Just just clarify what uh, like this piece of runtime spec, this piece of runtime spec we are supporting, the rest we don't. And yeah, we should even try to use the, the we have a runtime specs go struct. We can try to reuse parts of that here. Yep. Yeah, my second thought, what I actually had is it was from, from more from a practical step. So I don't know, like some kind of library or patched version of some component where we can practice like uh, we have uh, OCI container spec as an input and uh, OCI spec uh, like as output after we uh, do all this transformation. Uh, would it be like in some tool or in some library form? I, I don't really have. Yeah, th that's that's idea. definitely something we were discussing last time too is that um, in terms of deliverables, that we had that list that was interesting, which is like a specification. Uh, a Golang API, and I think what, that's what you're describing, a Golang library for merging the OCI spec with the CDI spec, for, for transforming. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking uh, as a long-term delivery, yes, we, we definitely need a library which we can reuse in both Cryo and ContainerD. Uh, but in short term for our like hacking or debugging purposes, uh, maybe some like small common line utility which we'll be using that library also will be good. So, so quick, quick Googling shows us something called as Jolt, which is a JSON to JSON transformation library. There's another one. So you can just maybe, uh, yeah. even simple JQ will work actually. We need a bit more than that. Like we, we need to read the like list of, uh, well, we need, we need to read a directory. We need to parse multiple JSON documents. Yeah. Yep. and when combining them uh, logically. So I I think just GQ might not work. <laughs> sure, I, yeah, I'm fine. I mean, we can just uh, have a common library or utility that can be used across the code base. All right, um, let's see. In that case, I'll, I'll start um, creating the CDI repository. Um, and I'll, should I just mirror it to, I think I called it container device interface. Uh, container, I'm sorry. Devices, I think is the uh, GitHub organization. And should I just um, just push um, Renault with no, CDI open to- I'll uh, open the pull request. Okay. With your current content. Is anyone going, going to review this whole thing? All right, yeah. no worries. I'll do that, make a pull request. Uh, I'll be happy to do that. And then from there on, I think like definitely um, making okay. sure that the specification is, um, so I think we mentioned here that we need, we'll probably need to specify the ordering. We'll probably need to specify the list of allowed transformations. Um, I think from there on, once we're okay with the specification, the biggest question that I was, um, that I think like we needed to figure out last time was, what is the life cycle of this project? Uh, when is it okay to say, we're done with the specification, let's now proceed to integrate it in something uh, in, in a runtime? Um, is there a um, is there a phase where we want to be doing some pox? Is there a phase where how do we want to organize the life cycle here? 
Well, I think choosing the annotations model sort of points out that this is going to be at least two phases, right? Uh, I, I, I would think what, like we will have like several phases, like one phase is a draft of specification, like, like first alpha, what we have. Uh, second phase would be like this library and small utility where we can validate what the approach works. Uh, third phase would be to validate with all existing devices. So for like, I don't know, for you it means like GPUs, for us it means what we have like FPGA, QAT and a few hours, uh, what we can represent. So we have like exact uh, input output for, for JSONs, what we expect. Uh, maybe at this stage we, we will have a set of unit tests which will say, uh, like from this specification, from these input files, we expect that to have as a uh, end goal. And when well, afterwards will be a step of trying to put it uh, or you know, integrate it into container D and cryo uh, to see if the whole chain is working properly. Okay, yeah, that's, that seems pretty reasonable to me. Uh, making sure that we're, we're past the draft stage is, is definitely something that, uh, I mean, seems like a pretty huge wall before we actually go and talk or go and make the pull requests. Uh, Toxin validation is going to be very nice. Um, just accelerating a lot how, um, yeah, I think like the, the different pull requests. Is there, is there, is there, are, are there things that um, Mike or Munal you think would be really important to have before we start engaging with, uh, or not engaging with, but before, or in that project life cycle? Well, I mean, what, not really sure what do you mean by life cycle? <laughs> are, you, are you talking about just the phases of, of each version of this, or are you talking about the, the final output results of the last so, one? I, I think a little bit of both, right? The, the general question is um, that I'm really asking is, are there things that you think uh, would be a blocker or would be something that um, maintainers <laughs> from yeah. yeah, for me, it, it, there, there are a, a plurality of users of the CRI and, and certainly if this only works for, you know, one subset of Kubernetes customers, I think that's not valid, right? So we'll, yeah. we'll need we'll need feedback from the Kubernetes groups, um, the rancher uh, teams, the you know, OpenShift groups, that sort of di different you know OKD groups that are going to be out there that will want to start using this, you know. And then when we get rid of the annotations with via caps, right? We'll we'll want to have that cycle go one more time around, right? getting the feedback from the, the, the primary users of the uh, this whole CRI path. So, uh, well, we have, we have to, this low level bit is not CRI. It, it's more like on, on OCI level. So like what Podman can, or Docker common line utility can use it. Yeah, fair enough, right, right. So then that's a different class of users that aren't using CRI, right? That yeah. we also have to include. All right, uh, how do we want to enable, this is, might be a, an interesting question, um, but maybe that's just configuration since, um, do we want to be able to have this be enabled through configuration or is this something that we think uh, will, because at the end of the day, we're, we're extending the dash dash device interface that uh, Docker and Podman have from uh, for the non-CRI users. So, is that something that um, we can see as um, something where we'll need to have a configuration flag. So I think this this is I see this as a something parallel to CNI, where we have this config directory and we pick up uh, yep. the CNI plugin uh, configuration from a directory. So that, that will work. And like Podman uses CNI, Cryo uses, and Container D also uses CNI. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And we could do it with COD. <laughs> it would work really well. Yep. 
or CGI. <laughs> that doesn't All right, see, 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 see. All right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that would work. I like it. Yep. All right. Um, so uh, anyway, the long term, I think we shouldn't be repeating the code in multiple places. So I, I, I envision in long term anyway, it will be library which we can uh, move it at some point to, uh, I don't know, like open containers or whatever, common yeah. place. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Reduced. And I think in the short term, even like we don't want to go through a lot of paperwork, we can use this new org that uh, Reno has yeah. create and just put it over there. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. this yeah. new work for development, and as soon as we are ready to go out right. for everybody, we will migrate it. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you very much in that case, everyone. So, Renaud, right next meeting in two weeks, right? Uh, yes, next meeting in two weeks, uh, 7 a.m. PST. What, what time is it for you, Sasha? Uh, for us, it's 5 p.m. Uh, in Finland. For Germany, I think it's uh, 4 p.m. So I, right. I think it's a good slot for almost everyone. Well, then uh, have a great end of the day. <laughs> Thank Renat, you, everyone, for joining. Renat, one quick question from Renat. Do, you, do you see this as scoping to the uh, file system resource devices? Or do we, are we just non-file system here? Uh, Mike, can you elaborate? What what do you mean by that? Well, when we talk about using the CNI model, right, to to specify, it just it just brought out to, in my mind that we we've got a you know file system resources that we use for as devices right now, um, the container runtimes. Um, I know it's a separate topic. I was just curious if um, if, if Murnal had thought about using you know some common. But <laughs> also device extensions uh, between the runtimes for this as well, or are we yeah. just scoping this to uh, you know use a configuration through the file system? Yeah, I think so. For now, that will be the easiest. Uh, use. Yeah, so that's the question. It's something to think about anyway, right? Mike, actually, I recall one one question. So, in in, in some private conversation, you mentioned what uh, with some guy from Apple, you were thinking about this library of generating default uh, config.json uh, file. So, is it somewhere located, or is it? Yeah, yeah, it's already merged. We we have the ability now to to have a, a new default um, config.json. So, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 can you send me a link for to 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 look at it? That was. Yeah, it's the, the container D cry is the current default off master. We haven't. I well, the next beta will have that feature in it. Okay. Probably this week. I'll I'll send you a link. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Right, have a great end of your day or start of your day.